I got a call from a guy who wants to sell his classic 1932 Ford. I'm always down to see a classic car, so Corey and I are going to go check it out. Thanks for coming out, guys. How's it going? You got a 1932 Ford Roadster here, steel body. It's nice. So you built it yourself, or? Yes, took right around three years. Is it a factory steel body or aftermarket steel body? Aftermarket, remanufactured. The body came out of Detroit, the front end, the frame, the brakes, the wheels, that's all SoCal. All right, so it's a 32 Ford, but there's nothing 1932. No. <laughs> all right. You'll be hard pressed to find any other Roadster like this. It sounds great, it runs great. It's gonna break my heart to get rid of it, but things change. It looks nice. The body and the paint looks really clean. Do you have any miles on it? It's got 450 miles. Wow. You uh, spent three years building this thing and got less than 500 miles on it. Yes. Just like building them more than driving them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure seems that way, yeah. This is the one everyone made hot rods out of because it was so damn light to begin with. Yes. But in 1932, this was just an inexpensive car to drive around. I mean, brand new, I, it was probably 500 bucks. Yes. And the top is chopped about six inches, and it's made for us short guys. When it comes to hot rods, the word chop originally meant removing anything on the car to make the car lighter. Fenders, bumpers, the hood, every pound you trimmed made the car just a little bit faster. Hey, check out the motor. And here you have an aluminum block, six liter LS2 fuel injected motor. This thing's gotta be fast, right? Yeah, it's right around 500 horse. All right. One thing that concerns me is, would we be able to fit in that thing? Uh, let's try it. Uh, not a lot of room, man. <laughs> you need a shoehorn on, there. <laughs> How big are you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a sardine in this thing. I'm good. You mind if I start it up? Yep. <laughs> a little tight for you there. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way my dad will be able to drive that thing, but it's definitely an awesome car. So what are you looking to get out of it, man? I have 140 in it. You have 140 into it? I have 80 in parts, and I'm figuring three years of labor is around 60. I'd like to get 70. Generally on these things, it's a labor of love, <laughs> not That's, a labor of money. <laughs> you're right, yes. This thing looks flawless, and there is a market for cars like this. But the guy is talking some big numbers. As much as I love it, I got to get an expert's opinion before I can make a real offer. Uh, I, I know it's really trick, it's really cool, but... <sighs> I know it sounds like a lot of money, but... Well, it is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I have a buddy look at it? No, go ahead. OK, I'll be back. This thing twisted my back like no tomorrow. I think there's a chiropractor out here? <laughs> so what do you think? I think I love it, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, Danny, we uh, brought you down here because hopefully you can find something wrong with this thing. <laughs> it's going to take me a while, man. I'll, I'll, I'll start I'll start looking. Yeah, man, you got buggy springs that's absolutely accurate. That's, that's exactly what the car should have. And the interior is beautiful, man. I love the seat. I love the leather. I like the fact that you just gave it a slight splash of color. The gauges are great. The steering wheel is absolutely beautiful. That, that, that choice was gorgeous. Can we take it for a spin? Yep. I'm warning you, that car is really small. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to fit in this thing, man, because I fold myself up. You ready for this? <laughs> the cars like this, most people use as a, you know, a weekend toy. But the way you've built this car, Brother man, this thing could be a daily dependable driver. That's what I wanted, was a daily driver. It's amazing. You've done a magnificent job. Man, Rick and Corey are really missing out, man. Yeah, they are. <laughs> the test drive was awesome. They knew exactly how this car should feel going down the road. And I wasn't disappointed in any way. It handled tight. The brakes were beautiful. There was no rattles, no squeaks. <laughs> Wonderful job. Yeah, man. 
What are your concerns with this again, Al? He wants a lot of money for this thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's the kind of car that you see at major high-end car shows. This is no corners cut, man. If somebody came to my shop and, and wanted this built, this is a $125,000, $135,000 build. That's a number that I would say that it would cost to build this car at my shop. But we're looking for a real-world value on the car. That's the real question here. Realistically, I would see a car like this in the uh, 70 to 75,000 okay. dollar range. I don't want to be a downer here, but there's no way in the world that you're ever going to recoup the money that you've got in this. It's the type of thing that you do out of love. That's right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Danny. You're Brother. the best. Danny knows custom cars, and apparently this thing is in great shape. But unfortunately, the seller knows it too. So we're going to have to talk him down a bit. What is your best rock bottom price? Best price is 70. That is the rock bottom best price I can do. 65? It will take me a while to sell it. That's... Well, I don't know if I can do that. That really hurts. I, I understand, but remember, they don't sell overnight. It takes the right customer. It takes someone with a lot of money in their pocket. $65,000 cash. 69. Uh, that, that's less than half of what I have in it. We do 67 for it. 6850 6750 6850 68250 All right, 68250 All right, we got a deal, man. Thank you. It's All a right. Nice car, man. I got a pretty cool car. Meet you at the shop. Okay, see you there. Hey. Have you guys seen the 32 Roadster? I haven't seen it, son. Someone probably stole it. It was parked in the warehouse. How could someone steal it? A high-tech thief could get into this warehouse easy. All you have to do is cut a hole in the roof and lift it out with a helicopter. Could pick the lock and use some James Bond stuff, probably, like, break the code with the computer and get through the door. I don't think so, Chum. I'm telling you, with a computer, they could do it. There's your thief right there, Rick. Are you driving the Roadster around? I'm not driving it around. I just took it to the gym. That's driving it around. The thing is in perfect condition. What if you wreck it? What if you ding it? What if you scratch it? I am it? not an idiot. I'm your partner now. Don't talk to me like a child. I can't believe my dad's giving me a hard time about this. I mean, what's the point of owning a pawn shop if I can't enjoy any of the items? I agree. You shouldn't be driving a damn thing. What is this? I guarantee you I can go to both of your houses right now and pick it apart and find a 1,000 things that belong to this shop. Not in my house. Really? Really? Just get the thing back in the warehouse. No more driving it. You want me to drive it in here, right? Nah, back to work. Even though my dad told me not to take the Roadster out, I just don't see the big deal of someone enjoying it while we actually have it. I've even come up with an angle to justify it. Your joy ride just cost me a big sale on that car. Well, it wasn't a joy ride. It was advertising. Trust me, I want to sell the car just as bad as you do. As far as I'm concerned, the longer it takes to sell it, the better. I love the thing. Well, while you were advertising the car, you blew a sale. I didn't blow a sale. You didn't sell something. So I'm going to go advertise it some more on my way home. Advertising. Why did I ever want a family business?